Today's topic is rationalizing fractions. A fraction is not considered simplified. If there is a radical in the denominator. All right, so we want to see this sentence in your notebook. This is a huge deal. This is what our whole topic is today. A fraction is not considered simplified if there's a radical in the denominator. So before we dive into some nasty problems, let's start with a little basic exercise. Exercise one, simplify each of the following products without a calculator. Watch what happens. Radical three times radical three. Well, remember, they're both under the radical, so you really want to say radical nine. But now get this, what's the square root of nine? Three, pretty convenient. Radical three times radical three ends up being just three. Watch how it works again. Radical seven times radical seven, you wanna say radical 49, but again, what's the square root of 49? Seven. Do you see a pattern yet? Let's do the next one. Radical 113 times radical 113, well, I don't know what the heck that multiplies to, but I know that if it's a radical times itself, it just turns out to be 113. And radical A times radical A, well, you've guessed it, that's just A. So here's our big deal. Any radical times itself is just the number under the radical. So again, let's get this copied in your notebook nice and neatly. Any square root times itself is the number under the square root. Pretty convenient. Now, to rationalize fractions with monomial irrational denominators, we simply multiply by the number 1, the multiplicative identity property, as a very specific form. So here's how we write these in simplest form. Let me kind of put that into English for you. When you have monomial, means one term on the bottom. So this is what should be in your notebook again. Whoops. One term, monomial. in the denominator we're simply going to multiply the top and bottom by itself so let me walk you through a few examples letter A 2 over radical 3 this is not considered simplified because of this radical in the bottom. Now again, this is a monomial, it's one term. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by itself. So right next to it, you're just gonna put times radical three and to the top as well, times radical three. What we were saying is we were simply multiplying by one because really radical three over radical three is one, any number divided by itself. So I'm really just multiplying this by one. So now on top, all you say is the 2 is outside, the 3 is inside, so you can't do anything. That's just 2 radical 3. In the bottom, we should know radical 3 times radical 3 is just 3. And now I have a simplified radical. 3 can't get broken down, and there is no radical in the denominator. Let's try another one. 4 over radical 2. Okay. So this is not simplified. So that word you want to use to yourself is rationalize. So I'm going to multiply by 1, which is really radical 2 over radical 2. I'm really just multiplying by 1. So on top, I get 4 radical 2. And on the bottom, radical 2 times radical 2 is just 2. Now this can get cleaned up one more step. Notice this is outside and this is outside, so I can divide those. Four divided by two gets me two radical two. Let's get the next one. C, five over three radical five. Okay, so I wanna multiply by one which is something over itself, and I can't leave the radical in the bottom. So I'm going to multiply by 3 radical 5 and 3 radical 5. Okay, so now watch what we get. 5 and 3 are outside, so when I multiply those, I get 15 radical 5. 
And now three and not three are outside, so that gets me a nine times radical five times radical five is just five. So if I keep cleaning, I've got 15 radical five all over. Nine times five is 45. Now, I think that can get simplified because these two numbers outside are both divisible by 5. So if I divide 15 by 5, I get a 3. And if I divide 45 by 5, I get 9. Now wait a minute, those two are both divisible. 3 goes into 3 once and into 9 3 times. So my final answer is 1 times radical 5, or radical 5, all over 3. Let's try one last one. Radical four sevenths. Now, on day one of radicals, we said we can rewrite that right away as radical four over radical seven. Now, where can you not leave the radical? Was that on the top or the bottom? Remember, you can't leave a radical on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by radical seven. Because it's like really multiplying by one. Now, you'll notice, I actually know this answer. The square root of 4 is really just 2. So on top, I get 2 outside, radical 7 is in the inside, and radical 7 times radical 7 is just 7. Now notice this 2 and 7 cannot get simplified, so I'm done there. Exercise 3. Which of the following is equivalent to the square root of 1 half? All right, so again, because it's multiple choice, it doesn't mean it's any easier than short answer. Let's slow down and rewrite this. The square root of 1 half is really the square root of 1 over the square root of 2. Now, before I go any further, do you know one of those answers? Well, hopefully you know the square root of 1 is really just 1 over radical 2. Now, remember, what are we doing? We are rationalizing. All right, we can't leave a radical in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by radical 2. On top, I get radical 2 over 2. And now it's simplified or rationalized because there's no radical in the denominator. Sometimes the denominator of the fraction is binomial. Okay, and that's just kind of the keyword I want you to highlight out of there in your notebook. Binomial. The key to rationalizing these types comes in understanding the multiplying of two conjugates. Now, we've talked about conjugate pairs before. If I have 6 minus radical 5, its conjugate is 6 plus radical 5. And there was spe something special that happened, and we'll see it again here. 6 minus radical 5 times 6 plus radical 5. All right, so hopefully your gut saying FOIL when it looks like this. And our first get us 36. Then I get a positive 6 radical 5 minus a 6 radical 5, minus, what's radical 5 times radical 5? Hopefully you know it's just 5. Now here's what's special about those conjugates. What's going to happen to those two middle terms? One's positive, but one's negative, and they're the same. Therefore, they cancel out to a 0. So I'm getting 36 minus 5, which of course is just 31. Let's try the next one. 2 minus radical 7 and its conjugate 2 plus radical 7. My guess is you can do this before I even finish. Since they're conjugates, remember the first and last are the only ones there. Those middle terms are going to cancel, so we can go floor to style on it again. First is 4, the two middle terms cancel. Okay, they cancel out, one's positive, one's negative, and then radical 7 times radical 7, remember, is just 7. So I get a total of negative 3. If you can't remember that those middle terms cancel, FOIL them all out. All right, letter C there, radical 10 plus radical 2 and its conjugate. So the conjugate of radical 10 plus 2 is radical 10 minus 2. And I did write those down wrong. Those are both radicals. All right, so let's see what happens. Radical 10 times radical 10, of course, is just 10. They're conjugates. The middle terms cancel. And a positive times a negative gets me a negative. Radical 2 times radical 2 is 2, so I get a total of 8. So to recap there, and let's stick this in our notebook, two binomials, a plus b and a minus b, are known as conjugate pairs. Their product is always the a squared minus the b squared. All right, those middle terms cancel. 
So exercise five, this is definitely the type of question we will see on our exam. Rewrite each of the following fractions in simplest form. Be sure to rationalize and reduce the fractions. All right, so remember, simplest form means no radical in the denominator. And to solve that, it's called rationalizing. So let's take a, one plus, one over three minus radical seven. This time, because it's a binomial, we have to use the conjugate, just like we practiced previously. So the conjugate of 3 minus radical 7, of course, is 3 plus radical 7. And whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. It's like multiplying by 1. So 1 times that junk is just 3 plus radical 7. And because these are conjugates, we're going to go Florida style, first and last. 3 times 3 is 9. A negative times a positive is a negative. Middle terms cancel. And radical 7 times radical 7 is just 7. So I get 3 plus radical 7 all over 2. And that is my final answer. Let's try another one. 3 over 3 plus radical 3. All right. Binomial on the bottom. Bi meaning two terms. So let's go conjugate. Conjugate of 3 plus radical 3 is 3 minus radical 3. All right, let's work out that magic on the top. Okay, we have to distribute now. It's this quantity outside times something with parentheses. So 3 times 3 is 9 minus, notice this is outside and this is inside. I'm just going to rewrite it as 3 radical 3. On the bottom, they're conjugates, so my firsts get me 9. Middle terms cancel, minus radical 3 times radical 3 is just 3. Now there's no canceling till you simplify. So on top I have 9 minus 3 radical 3, and on the bottom 9 minus 3 is 6. Now again, you can't cancel unless you factor. Get that in big words on your notebook there. Okay, if you factor. So I'm asking myself, do I have a GCF on top? Is there something I can pull out on each side there? Well, I think I could pull out a 3. I could say that's really 3 times 3 minus radical 3, all over 6. Now, how do you know if you're right? Take 5 seconds. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times radical 3 is 3 radical 3. That's how you know you're right. It multiplied back to what you started with. Now you can do 3 goes into 3 once and into 6 twice. So I get 3 minus radical 3 all over 2. So you'll see there's lots of places to make your, your mistakes. Slow and steady is the key here. Let's go one last one of that. 2 over 4 minus radical 6. All right, let's see how good you are. Let's pause it, multiply by the conjugate, and see if we match up to the same. Don't cheat yourself now. Pause it and see what you get. All right, I went with the conjugate of 4 plus radical 6. On top, I got 8 plus 2 radical 6, all over 16 minus 6. Now watch my cleanup. I have on top 8 plus 2 radical 6, all over 10. Now again, I'm not canceling unless I, the F word first, factor. Factor first. On top, what could you pull out? I think you can pull out a 2, and I'm going to say that's 4 plus radical 6. Now again, it takes 5 seconds to check. 2 times two, two times 4 is 8, 2 radical 6. It worked. All over 10. Now the 2 goes into 2 once and into 10 5 times. So I get 4 plus radical 6 all over 5. And remember the keyword, this is now rationalized. All right, in our next example, we're going to make it just a little uglier. And these are, you know, what we'd see on our exam. So as we rate each of the following fractions in simplest form, be sure to rationalize and reduce the fractions. Now remember, rationalize just means you can't leave a radical in the denominator. So I can't leave this. So let's start with question A. We have 3 minus radical 5 all over 3 plus radical 5. And I've got to rationalize. So I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So by 3 minus radical 5 and 3 minus radical 5. 
it's basically like multiplying by one. I'm multiplying by the same thing on the top and bottom. Now, I do need to wrap my numerator and denominator in parentheses because it's a binomial. I'm not just distributing, I'm foiling. So let's start with the denominator because those are our conjugates. 3 times 3 is 9. The middle terms are going to cancel because they're conjugates. A positive times a negative is a negative. And of course, radical 5 times radical 5 is 5. Now on top, it's a tad uglier. 3 times 3 is 9 for our first. Our outers are not conjugate, so they don't cancel out. I'm going to get a negative 3 radical 5. My inners are also going to give me a negative 3 radical 5. I hope you'd agree. And watch my last term. I have a negative times a negative. That's going to get me a positive 5. Okay. Now, I don't dare cancel anything. It's all about the cleanup. Focus strictly in the top. So just looking on top, I can put the 9 and the positive 5 together for a 14. I can put negative 3 radical 5 and negative 3 radical 5. Of course, they don't cancel. They just make negative 6 radical 5 all over 4. Now, again, I want to stress to you, it's all about the F word, the factor word. All right, there's no canceling until you factor. On top, out of the 4 and the 6 here, I could pull out a 2. And I've got 7 minus 3 radical 5 all over 4. Now, because I factored and I'm multiplying, I can reduce this 2 and this 4. 2 goes into 2 once and into 4 twice. So I get a final answer of 7 minus 3 radical 5 all over 2. And this is simplified and rationalized. Notice I don't have a radical in the denominator. And I'm clearly simplified. I can't factor anything more. All right, here's that second question, B. Hopefully you've got the idea down by now. Why don't you pause it, write down what you're going to multiply by, multiply the top and bottom, and see if we agree. Okay, so don't cheat yourself. Pause it, try it on your own. All right, let's just double check my math. Hopefully you have the same thing. In the denominator, 6 times 6 is 36. These are conjugates, so the middle terms cancel. And radical 6 times radical 6 is 6. In the numerator, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 3 radical 6, plus 6 radical 6, plus 6. Okay, now it's all about the cleanup. 6, 18 plus 6 gets me a 24. Positive 3 radical 6 and positive 6 radical 6 get me positive 9 radical 6 all over 30. Okay, now remember, back to your favorite F word of factor, and I'm sure that's the one we're all thinking, factor, factor, factor. On top, I'm looking for a GCF. I can pull out a 3, I hope you would agree. And if I pull out a 3, I am left with 4 plus 3 radical 6. And how do you know if you're right? Take 5 seconds and distribute that back through. Is 3 times 4 24? No, I just made a typo myself. Uh, so let me slow down, that's why we check. Let me kill that. And let's pull, let me ask myself about this GCF again. Let me pull out a 3. And if I pull out a 3, hopefully we're left with 8 this time. That makes more sense. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 3 radical 6. And you can see why it's so important to check. Uh, divided by 30. Okay, now that I have factored, I can cancel this 3 into 3 once, and then into 30 10 times. So my final answer is 8 plus 3 radical 6 all over 10. And again, this is rationalized. I don't have a radical in the denominator, and I don't have another GCF I could pull out. All right, well, we've made it to the last problem today, and we're going to look for this as a little quiz grade in your notebook tomorrow. Now, again, look at all the work we needed. Just because it's multiple choice doesn't mean it doesn't need work. Take your time, multiply by the conjugate, and we'll check in your notebook tomorrow. Have a great night.